Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to another live stream. We're gonna talk today about working with text in MATLAB and we're gonna talk a lot about using the string data type and a lot of the benefits of that. So I'm Heather, it's great to um, have you all with us. And I'm a, mat a product manager at Mat for MathWorks uh, and I focus on MATLAB for uh, data science. So I work with a lot with the teams that build uh, things like strings and timetables and things that we uh, tend to talk about here. Uh, so really want this to be interactive, please put your questions in the chat. I think there are some already, and I'll, I'll get some of those uh, and answer them. Uh, that's really what this is about, just making sure uh, you have uh, all of your questions answered or as many as we can that are related to the topic. And um, we'll go just go ahead and dive in. So I am um, not going to show any more slides except for that one, <laughs> uh, because this is about MATLAB, right? So uh, we're going to talk first about this title, <laughs> because if you noticed, uh, there is a regular expression in the title. So I wanted to mention that right away that we're really mostly going to try to avoid regular expressions. I think that's kind of one of the beauties of uh, working with strings is that you don't often need these things. But we'll come back to uh, talk about what that actually does. So we're going to uh, start with talking about just generally working with text because sort of historically there have been a number of ways to work with it. You may have used um, cell arrays of strings like Celster. And uh, if that's the case, you're likely going to want to use strings. So we'll talk about uh, some of the differences and then um, we'll show examples, really just uh, you know parsing some different uh, types of text, you know, cleaning it up and getting um, information out of it. So um, then we'll also talk about analyzing, like uh, making visualizations and counting words and things like that. Uh, we won't go into too much detail. I think we can always come back to um, more uh, intense, you know, text analytics type of topics like sentiment analysis and topic modeling and things later, but we'll at least kind of get you started. Um, this, you know, we don't want it to take too long. I could probably spend all day on that. So again, please put your questions in the chat. Um, I'm going to show, I have some links that we will put in the chat as well, I think. Um, but basically, we'll just show some examples from the documentation um, to help us out. So uh, I will actually go to this first example. So this actually talks a little bit about some of the things that I'll talk about <laughs> too. So you have uh, kind of a reference whenever you get back. It has a lot of the functions that will show um, and some of the examples that will show as well. So it's a really great place to start if you even just Google um, you know, MATLAB strings. I think you'll uh, find that. So let's talk about you know, these, these differences, right? So we can create um, a char array. So I'm going to show uh, what this is like. You might be used to this sort of single uh, quote kind of world uh, in MATLAB. So that is a char. And oftentimes, you know, this is sort of the low level kind of type where, um, you know, if you're doing deployments or, um, you know, something like that, where you want to run the, um, your MATLAB code on C or something, um, you know, like that, uh, oftentimes you're going to want a, a char in the end because that's a super low level kind of like a C level data type. Um, so, but anyways, uh, this is also like a matrix. So uh, it's not something that you want to use for, um, you know, storing strings because you would have to have it match. It needs to be rectangular. So if I wanted to add another word or another phrase to this, it would have to be exactly the same characters. So that's really not the way. You also may have, you know, again, seen the, uh, or char, <laughs> cellster, what we call it, cell array of strings. And so this is what people have used for many, many years in MATLAB. And um, you'll still see this from time to time. Um, and you know, again, just, just to kind of um, put everybody in, on the same page. Um, but this is really, if you have this kind of, of use where you want to store uh, strings kind of separately or text words or something like that separately, you really, really want a string. So um, I'll just, another one here. All right. typing backwards, sorry, bear with me. There we go. So we can create this just like a, a regular MATLAB array um, with you know the square brackets, you know, instead of the curly brackets, you know, kind of very similar output. Uh, but you have a lot of really good options for this. So um, you notice, you know, it's one by two, so it's not like the um, char where it's a matrix. And uh, we'll talk a lot about uh, some of the benefits, but I just wanted to keep just noting um, some of the differences. So with, uh, you know, because uh, oftentimes people before 2016b um, were using the cell array of strings, 
um, compared to this array of strings, uh, the string data type is much, much more performant. And um, it also has, you know, it's uh, much easier on memory. So your overhead and things like that. So, um, you know, a lot of people, sometimes they're not motivated to update their code as uh, the releases come out. But this is something that you really should, uh, you know, I definitely highly recommend it. We've also made it very easy, I think, for people to uh, convert. So, for example, um, a lot of the string methods that we'll show work on uh, the cell star arrays too. So that if you, you know, didn't update your code, but you still want to, you know, take advantage of some of the nice uh, methodologies you can, or functionalities, you can do that. All right, so let's show an example of uh, using some strings. Um, where did this go? All right. So this is, you know, fairly straightforward. I guess I kind of already showed hello world, this classic. Um, oh, that's fun. I accidentally hit try this example, and it'll open it up in uh, MATLAB online. So uh, you can do that. I don't want to do that right now. I wanted to just open it in MATLAB. All right. Here we go. All right, so if you're following along, you can uh, use the same one. All right, so we uh, saw, you know, creating an array or creating a string array. So we use double quotes instead of the single quotes. You can also use string, you know, around, uh, you know, as a conversion type. Uh, but something that's helpful is str length. So you just want to see how many um, characters are in there. Um, another, you know, common question is how to make double quotes. So say you're you're uh, using these in a title, you know, what do you do? Well, you know, you just actually use two quotes together. So one of my favorite things about strings is that you can actually add them together, and it makes it super super easy for um, file names and things like that. So um, I'll just run this section for example, and uh, it's you know creating this variable called Celsius and adding it together. Pretty cool, right? So you can also you can use the um, square brackets. This is the universal hand symbol for a square bracket. Um, but you can use the square brackets to concatenate like you would before, um, but it's really handy to be able to use the plus and uh, minus. So I'll show a quick example uh, because I, I think I saw a question. Um, actually, I think I have you open even. So super, super helpful for file names. Um, wait, where is it? Here it is. So <laughs> don't look too closely at the example. I was uh, working with um, Joanna on, um, you know, we were re writing a bunch of files and rearranging images and things like that. And uh, we wanted the label and then, you know, the number of the image and then plus JPEG. It's just really, really easy. You can also do this with an array. So for example, So if you have a you know list of names or something, you can uh, do something like that. Um, super helpful. It's, we we added like an underscore to everything. Um, so you know again, just very handy to be able to do that. So it's really it's not doing um, you know it's just adding the strings together, not really doing like a, a char. Um, you know you would be adding the values behind it. So very useful to be able to do that. Uh, you also can um, do logical operations. So um, this is handy for being able to pull out certain information from a uh, data set. So for example, uh, let's actually close these. And there's, go back to this other example. Yeah, so this is in the uh, documentation also. It's the documentation for text analytics. I like it. It just has a bunch of emojis. It has uh, Twitter type data where, um, you know, it just it has just kind of a lot of text and it's a lot of fun. Uh, so I'll put the link in there, but it also has this nice uh, word data where it has, you know, the list of um, you know, the text that we saw and uh, we eventually want to count the number of words and do some analysis on this. So let's see, we want to just uh, pull out. Um, there we go. Some words. All right, so let's pull out uh, anything that is sun. All 
There, words, dots. So just like uh, you would typically expect in MATLAB with a uh, logical operation, you get a logical uh, array. And there's one instance of sun. Uh, so this is really helpful for, you know, again, if you're just, if you're looking for, especially with Twitter data and you're looking for something um, that you're very interested to see if people are talking about it, you can, you know, search for those keywords. If you uh, have the sort of natural data like this, and we want to see if uh, any of these uh, have the word sun in them, um, not, not necessarily that they're equal to sun, there are some nice methods for that. So um, let's go back here. All right, word data, not words. No, that's not the one. All right, there it is. All right, so I just used uh, contains, and uh, this was able to uh, look into each of those phrases or the, uh, you know, um, for strings of text and uh, see if any of those contain sun. So um, those, that's one of the really nice string methods. I will just try to do this so I don't keep jumping back and forth. And I wanted to show a couple others. So these are all listed in the doc, but uh, sometimes it's handy just to have them right in front of you. All right, so notice some uh, equals, things like that, we showed contains. Um, some of the others that are super helpful, especially for parsing um, things like text or things like <laughs> web data um, or HTML, you know, extracting the data, extract before, after, replacing. So let's see. <sighs> I keep losing my examples. All right, I will. <laughs> Pause for questions while this opens. Um, let's see. So we had one about the uh, summation of two chars, uh, like a math operation. So we showed that it's definitely possible and very useful. You can do that with arrays or just uh, single um, string, you know, one by one. And then uh, there's another uh, talking about uh, methods like uh, stir comp. So yeah, that stir comp and um, you know stir find those are uh, classic uh, kind of uh, methods or functions for um, cell stir or the cell arrays of strings. So you would want to use double equals, uh, like I think we just showed a little bit ago. Um, yeah, something like uh, double equals. Another one that's really good is is member. So uh, I'll go back to our example. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I keep jumping around, losing it today. It's kind of early in the morning for me. So see, we wanted to find um, multiple words. We could use um, something like this. So then you have you can pass in multiple. So that way you don't have to you know have a whole bunch of uh, logical you know expressions add add you know in blah blah blah. Um, so that's really useful. And then um, there's also uh, matches. So if we go back to our uh, list of methods, um, you would be able to see a couple. Yeah. So there's matches and you know a couple other that you uh, might be able to use to you know kind of uh, get in there and again. All right, so um, looks like I can go back to, I lost my outline too, I guess I changed, <laughs> closed everything. That's okay. So we talked a little bit about um, the adding, the, uh, you know, equals, uh, not equals, um, some of the parsing. So I'll show, uh, we can just use the same word data. All right, next stop, Paris. <laughs> So maybe we want to see um, this last hashtag. Uh, we can do something like All right, something's happening. Did I not? All right, 
Very good. <laughs> okay, so um, I think I did something else while that was working. So this just went and took um, anything that was, you know, after the hashtag. So very, very helpful. I also use, um, you know, is erase between or, um, you know, extract after thing, or extract before, uh, extract between, those are also really useful. So one of, um, I will show one thing that's really helpful too for something like this uh, is, uh, sorry, splitting um, the data. So, you know, sometimes you want to collect the words in this kind of uh, example. So, you know, we don't want everything in one big string. We want each word together, basically. So we could do something like this, split. And then we can uh, specify what we want to split it on. So if we have things that are sort of comma separated, you know, just use a comma. You can use white space. There are a couple of different ways that you, oh, great. So uh, because, you know, this has different uh, lengths, we just use one at a time. Um, you can also use, there's, um, I forget what the name is. thinking of um, string fun or array fun. Anyway, I'll come back to it. <laughs> um, but anyways, that's something that you want to uh, keep in mind too. Um, the, you know, some of the methods are expecting, you know, sort of rectangular kind of, uh, you know, strings to work on those, or at least containing the same number of delimiters. So that's how you would manage that error, <laughs> just uh, loop through uh, and, you know, go after that. So then, um, you know, in this case, you now have an array that has the separate words. So a couple others um, that are really helpful are, is uh, counting. So um, let's go back. We use the same one here. Sorry, I keep really losing it today. Thanks for bearing with me, everyone. Uh, OK, here we go. So let's see if. Um, we can count how many times sun appears. So if we look at, let's see, five times, and it shows, you know, in each line how many uh, times that appears. So that's really helpful. Um, this is also something you can uh, use with a word cloud. So it's a very useful vis visualization that people are often, um, you know, very used to. Uh, as especially when you're going through and analyzing a lot of text data, it's really helpful to go through. Um, and you know, visualize a bunch of word clouds as you do certain steps. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Go back to my other example. So um, with uh, text analytics toolbox, you actually can uh, pass the data in raw. And it'll do all of the, you know, splitting, parsing, uh, those kinds of things. So I'm going to run this section, um, so you can see the output, wherever that may be. <laughs> so uh, again, very useful because it takes that raw text data, the whole, the whole sentences, all, your, all the sentences that we had collected there, and does all of the parsing for you. Um, if you don't have text analytics toolbox, you can also just do this in MATLAB, uh, like we showed with splitting. So uh, you could split each line and then uh, you know count the words, like we uh, have the words listed, and then you can do um, a word cloud, for example. Like, uh, if we had it like this, uh, you can just pass in the uh, characters and then the counts. So that's also super useful um, to be able to you know do it that way. For example, and so the benefit of this, I mean, it's a kind of a, a fun example, I guess, but you can see that a lot of people were uh, tweeting about weekend, about vacation. I mean, I guess it's Thursday. That sounds great to me. Um, and, you know, it's helpful because we could see, you know, if this is something that we're looking at for work or for our analysis, you know, oh, wow, everyone's talking about this, you know, let's dig in further. Um, or if we wanted to see if there were some bad sentiment, you know, these uh, unhappy faces, maybe those are something that's really interesting to us, uh, we can dig in further. So I will um, pause for a moment here for more questions. Uh, 
Um, let's see. Um, there was one in my experience, fprintf is used a lot in courses and programming and strings and data analytics, uh, any reason for the difference. Um, I think really it's been around a very long time. Um, it's a C function, so it's something that people are kind of used to. It's it's very historical. Um, we definitely would want uh, plus, you know, adding the the strings together like we showed earlier is much easier. Um, there are also, um, you know, one of the things with fprintf is that you can show the precision. So, for example, if you were trying to, um, you know, display a number on your title of a plot. Um, you could say, oh, I only want, you know, three or four digits by some weird, like, percent F 8.2, blah, blah, blah. Um, so you can also do that in some of the the uh, string methods, too. So um, I actually, I don't know if you can do it directly through string. Um, I can uh, find out in a sec, but <clears throat> definitely I would recommend using string um, as, opposed, <laughs> as opposed to F print F. So it's, you can also, you, I mean, it'll it'll work interchangeably if you're passing strings into that. Um, but you know that's that's the difference there. Um, and how to create a histogram of words? All right. Um, so we could basically do a similar thing that we did here with our uh, word count. So and basically make a bar chart. Um, you can. I don't actually know if this works. Let's try it. I don't think it's going to. Uh, Okay, so that wasn't the way to do it. I think it requires a categorical for that. But either way, uh, you can um, take, you know, at least look at the uh, output of the counts. Um, but I think that would be the way to do it. There, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I was just looking at it. like so. If we wanted to look at, uh, you know, more, if there were more people that had tweeted about Sun, we could have uh, looked at, you know, some histograms of the different uh, words like that. Uh, just by you know using the methods that we showed earlier. All right, good um, questions. <laughs> and let's see, what is the string encoding default uh, UTF-8? Oh yeah, the uh, strings are UTF-16, so the string data type. All right, good questions. Um, there was another, oh, uh, just to, note on the um, compose for the answer for fprintf. So let's take a look at that. There we go. So this has uh, the ability to pass in the format spec that I was talking about with fprintf. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> um, so uh, if you wanted, if you were using fprintf for the ability to, you know, adjust the um, format spec or the, you know, number of digits that are printed, you can do that with Compose. All right, excellent. So um, I wanted to just show, uh, finally, here we go, sentiment analysis, just really quickly. I just think it's a nice uh, example of doing pre-processing of strings and uh, all the things that we've been showing. Uh, the um, example is in, I have, I'll have a link in the doc or sorry, link in the chat quickly, uh, but I wanted to just show this one part of it because it's really, uh, I think it's really useful. So this is an example where, um, we're looking at like stock information. Um, and you know, you can see there's a lot of people tweeting about these certain stocks. Um, you can go through, this is using text analytics toolbox. Again, we can uh, talk later about that. There's a lot of uh, extremely, uh, fancy detailed, uh, NLP kinds of, um, Know, functionality in there, but there's some nice uh, functions. But I wanted to show more about. Uh, oh, this is <laughs> finally there it is. So this was looking at the uh, frequent words. Oh, you could also use a histogram. So I mentioned the bar chart, but uh, histogram has the ability to pass in the the text data as well. So there you go. Um, and you can also through the histogram you can specify you know how many to display and things like that. So I um, will put the, uh, anyways, I'll put all of these links in the uh, doc or in the chat. Again, I keep saying these things wrong. And uh, we can, you know, explore more about how to get into this. Uh, this is just kind of quickly using positive and negative words to just highlight them in the, um, 
in the word cloud. So, you know, just wanted to show some of the possibilities uh, that you have. All right. So, um, I don't, I'll pause another, I'll pause a little bit longer for some questions. Um, and I will show that uh, example, or I'll put the example link in the chat. So, please uh, put some more questions in here before we wrap it up. All right, don't see any more examples. It's okay. Uh, I'll wait another moment while I copy these in. I really appreciate all the questions and your attention today. Um, I hope, uh, yeah, I hope um, you guys continue to uh, ask questions. We can uh, check the comments and uh, see what kind of things you guys want to look at. And uh, thanks again for your attention and all the questions. I've had some fun. Hopefully you have some ideas of what you can do with your text data and hopefully you're motivated to check out the string data type.